th this is the SEER grant project, and uh, we again appreciate the, the support that that uh, brought to us. This is cement block construction, and then we blew green zero insulation onto the cement block, and we uh, used a lot of uh, consultants and resources to determine the R factor and what we needed to do. And uh, the one ton geothermal is what is keeping this at 50. Uh, the, 50 to, uh, the 50 degree mark is what will prevent weevil outbreak. And we don't, ha we don't use any, we don't even use diatomaceous or tenacious earth that we clean our own grains and that is actually so dangerous if you're cleaning because of the dust and uh, your lungs, it can really be quite dangerous. So this, and certified organic wholesale sales, this is the kind of facility, just like a warehouse that Kroger or anybody else has, this is our warehousing and we don't use any chemicals and uh, the only thing we use is mouse traps. but we, we had, uh, one outbreak a few in early on, but we had learned lessons and added some barriers and <laughs> and we haven't had a problem since, but we do keep traps set so we can watch for any signs. In here, the dust is minimal. Nothing comes in here till it's cleaned and bagged. Nothing comes out until the order is placed. And so this stays pretty uh, closely controlled. When we're bagging after we clean, we test coming out of the field. We don't have grain dryers. That's another thing that makes it really challenging for us. We couldn't have harvested wheat this year, as many farmers struggled with that, even trying to keep it under 18%. But we have moisture readers, so when we're on the combine, we'll read the moisture going into the combine, and uh, not combine until the conditions, the out. Uh, weather conditions and the humidity or the moisture levels of the grain are right. And then once we clean it and, and we bag it in that three ply bag with vapor barrier, then if you get it into cold storage and you keep it at that 50 degrees, then that uh, we have not had, it stays at that constant moisture. We have not had any problem even with the geothermal cooling. A lot of people felt that might put too much moisture in the air, but that's why you've got to keep it at 50 because the colder temperatures don't allow that condensation. And if this gets up to close to 60, then you can, you know, you can tell. That's why we've got to keep it at that 50 level. So, but we've never had a problem with it, the moisture increasing once we put it in here. This is a non-porous material and with the three-ply vapor barrier, that has worked for us. We can expand, we have room to expand into other parts of the barn, and uh, we could just route new duct work and do similar type of construction. So, uh, and if we outgrow this, then, you know, that's the beauty of a barn, and uh, Dad had the foresight to cover it in aluminum siding. I don't know if you looked up, but the, it's the original barn built uh, 1900 something with all the original timbers and uh, uh, so he covered it in the 70s, wasn't it dad, with aluminum siding. Just in working with grains in hot, humid temperatures in Indiana, then you, you go, oh, well, you can't sell it like that, so how do you fix that? And you start asking questions, and then the network you know, of people, I think we're really blessed to have uh, Roy Ballard in this region. In, in Rush County, they don't, are, we went to Extension first, and they weren't really... Uh, interested in much other than sheep, that was his expertise. So not every extension agent at that time had an interest in even going to specialty crops because it's just so obscure in traditional agriculture production. So uh, we're fortunate to have a, a resource, you know, and, and Purdue, and you know, just in asking questions, I think you always end up back at Sayre for the type of production that we all do, because that you guys all do that, or teach about it, or <coughs> understand the complexities of diverse agriculture. And any money that a farmer can get, we're gonna go after. Uh, Jefferson Agricultural Institute, I give that link out to many people who are getting involved in the specialty crop production because just the intricacies of each crop 
are, uh, make it very challenging to diversify. But with the crazy weather conditions, I think in any state people are struggling with that. The diversification becomes critical. We start out, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna try to have this, 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 and this, but we end up with maybe three items. So uh, it's hard to market when you're an agricultural producer too because you can't project. You don't know what you're gonna end up with at the end of the season, but we wanna use our website to tell that story. If we don't have much flax, then we can explain why. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a part of the education and uh, importance of farmers working together in regions to you know, fill bulk bins, diversify, and not have mono agriculture. Keith was a city boy, uh, a veteran. He was a Green Beret for 12 years. He got on a tractor, and it uh, gave him, uh, you know, fulfillment. He now knows that he can grow food for people. When he was in the service, he was serving others in a different capacity, and so it's really been life-changing for him, and uh, so it's been a journey. We got it completed, and it, and it has certainly been, I mean, it just you know, open the door to wholesaling for us, which you can't wholesale if you don't have a, a room like this. So we hope to participate in Hoosier Harvest Market. The main thing that's holding us up in our ball jar packaging is the ground product. We'd hope that would move forward quickly. Nothing ever happens quickly. Uh, they are experts in equipment. We are experts in food. And so we, you never know how much somebody knows about food until you get started. So we've got a ways to go, but uh, it's all working.